Good afternoon, Scott Redley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So another down day. I think this makes it uh, six to seven in a row, which sort of tells you there's something uh, a little bit more dangerous out there than, than we could even see. Because typically on a day like today, after five down days, there would be enough energy, enough strength for them to at least turn the market green, going into Thanksgiving. They're the forces that will probably want people to go out and shop. They want you know Black Friday to be a success. They want everyone to be somewhat happy over the holidays. So for them to close the market near the dead lows after six or so down days, that, that just means that it's a, it's a dangerous scenario and everyone should have a lot of risk off, which I do think people do. Because if you look at the chart, we talked about getting really, you know, very flexible out of some longs at this particular point on the chart. We talked about this wedge pattern. We talked about this indecision. After a big move off those October 4th lows, you know, you went to 1292. This was that area that became very choppy, an area to be one foot in, one foot out. And then last Wednesday, it resolved or gave you an indication it was going to resolve to the downside. This was one flag or one day you could have got out of some of your longs. And then this day. So the, you know, those that did that, including myself, you, know, you saved yourself some pain. But now we were at the point where it's like death by a thousand cuts. Because just because we were able to sell 1245, it doesn't mean you, know, you could buy right here, which was a spot to try, right? I, I tried it with everybody. We tried this spot, made sense. It tried to pause here. You know, this was the area that held in early October, held for two days. Today we opened through it, and it really didn't find a friend at all. If you look at the, the three-minute chart, you'll see the gap really never even attempted to get filled. And, and typically, you know, it's not, you can't see it here. Let's see if we could see it on the spiders. You know, when you have a gap that doesn't get filled, you know, you, you still stay in direction of that gap because no, no one thinks that anything is cheap. So we opened up. They gave longs, no window out. So maybe you could have saved yourself, um, you know, gotten out, what was this, about 117.65 and, and saved yourself a decent amount of pain. But overall, um, it was def definitely frustrating. And I had this whole talk with Sperling right after the close. You know, why, why do they do this or what happens? Like what made this happen where, you know, we came off the lows, you know, to, to look like we were going to push up and push uh, for some kind of rally at the end of the day and then fail. And, and the, there is no really reason except for this. If, um, you know, for six down days in a row, if we all of a sudden if we come to me, you know, are, are short. If you were short, you see a rally like that. When the Dow's down 700 points, we're down 70 handles in five days. When you see a rally like that, you can't stay short, so you have to cover. So that's what causes that. So uncommitted shorts that might have chased to the downside or, or people who haven't taken their profits off, you know, they, they get out of the way, and that's what causes the scurry. And then you have real sellers come in like they did at the end of the day, and that's what took us back to the lows. So if you want to be short on day four, day five, day six, you have to take the pain of those you know, little fluff-ups and then see where they lead to and just stay with your conviction. And right now, those who have a conviction to the short side are getting rewarded. Those like us who try and navigate trends that might have been short for, if you go back to the chart, the first you know, three days of this move. And you know, there were some guys that you know, shorted in here, shorted you know, these, you know, into this area, and then covered over here. You know, and then said, okay, I'll take that move from 124 to 119-ish. To okay, yeah, I don't need to sit around for the juice. But then if you, if you try and buy some back, it, 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 there was just no bounce. And now I would say there's another level that we'll see how we, how we act, I guess, if, if we open down on a Friday. We'll see how we, you know, what takes place over the next two days. But overall, it, it's, it's an environment that's tough. It's an environment that uh, you, you need to be really you know, on quick feet or just not doing a lot. And, and if you uh, have a long macro environment, make sure you're being real with yourself that you can handle it. As far as some stocks I'm looking at, you know, if you look at the spiders for the last time, <laughs> you will see that you know, we are here, right? This is where we are in the spiders. This is where we are in um, the SPX, which is coming to a, a little level that might want to hold. This was the breakout area you know, that now is coming back and, and it could hold. We'll see what happens on Friday. But look where we are here and look where the low is in, the low is in from October. So the same way we like to trade relative strength, if you look in a short relative weakness, there are a lot of stocks that are approaching that October low and the market's not even there yet. So those are the stocks that are going to continue to the downside. One of them real quick, you look at Bank of America. 
I mean, uh, BAC, I'm sorry. BAC is right at that low, right? So if you want to look at a problem area, BAC closed on the dead lows right at the low from October. So if this market goes back down to those lows, you better believe BAC is going to be a lot lower. You know, if you look at the XLF, XLF, it's not quite there yet. So that's showing that Bank of America is even more of a problem than the, the XLF, the overall indice. And, you know, we, we talked about levels to trade against. And once this floor broke, this was your way out. And now look where it is. You know, Goldman Sachs also, another clue in the banking sector. We talked about, you know, once it broke this, this rising little uptrend, this was, this was troublesome. And then when it broke this 98 level last Wednesday, you know, we said, get out of the way. And now this, too, is a lot closer to those October lows than the indices. So we'll see how it handles that to see if they try and do any kind of double bouts or whatever. If you look at Amazon, so to speak, in, in the tech sector, okay, you, you see the, this is already through the October lows, right? So Amazon, which has been a fan favorite for a long time, this was the October low, okay? And look where we are. We're below it and controlled by a gap, relative weakness. Apple. You know, the October low was right around here, right? This was the October low. But we're, we're pretty damn close. So this is showing relative weakness. High beta is showing relative weakness to the S&P. That's showing you that, that, that growth is, is leading the way down this time, not holding up better. That's a bad sign. And if you look at this small trend line here, we're coming into an area that's going to be real important from a macro area. And I also I think I drew this line, um, I don't know, I think I was talking to Alex afterwards, trying to show like, the, the long-term macro trend of Apple and from this area uh, up to where we're touching here, you know, if, if it doesn't hold this area, the next area is 320. So on a micro level, it's been a great little trade, figuring out the island top, shorting this breakdown, remember that box pattern? And now if you think that Apple can't go lower and you're just committed to the long term, you know, you better think twice when it breaks this little trend area, if it does, that if 363 is, is pretty important. You know, then you go to other stocks, you go to like, and see what the retail did today. Retail, still hanging around, but you know, by a thread. Okay, you're still controlled by this little gap. It's now below these, these moving averages. It lost a 50 day, it's on the 200 day. Retail, if uh, we don't get some good data, or if they wanna sell the data that comes out, it, it could be a little bit of trouble. So I'm seeing like a lot of flashes of trouble. So when you see that, that's when you switch gears. So hopefully you switch gears when we were at the apex of that wedge with one foot in, one foot out. And if you sold or got short, congratulations. If you tried buying the last day or so like I've been trying to do, hopefully again, you, you, you lost a little and didn't turn into a disaster. Because right now it's real easy to lose money in this market. It's not a great setup. It's a five against a five. So you don't know what's going to happen. You could bust, a dealer could bust. There's no real rules. You're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to not hit and let him go over. But then all of a sudden he gets a five and then gets a 10, and you're like, ooh, that could have been me, and then there was a face card. There's just no rules in this area because the market's broken, there's no edge, and as oversold as we are, dangerous markets can get more oversold. So if you're gonna try to find a cute little bounce, you gotta trade a level versus a level. If you're gonna be short like a lot of guys were in here, you know, at 320, you better be able to handle a, a little bit of a fleece, you know, to the upside like we had because you know, after six down days, you could get stuck in a squeeze. That could be painful if you don't want to be committed to it for the next three, four days. So when all of this starts to be a formula, it's a formula for disaster. So you step back and just say, I'll wait till I see my pattern. I'll wait till I see a better setup. And you don't have to make donations to the market. You know, make donations to charity. The market's not charity. You know, it's a little bit better. You get better karma. As far as like the OAH is, you take a look here. Um, Broke below this, this recent support area. This was the wedge here. This was that push through failure. And now it's just cascading lower. It's, it's still well above the October lows. And I guess, you know, you could put some kind of what, you know, whatever, whatever that means to you. Um, it's showing relative strength, but it's still in no man's land. And you have a few points of reference, which is all we could use now is points of reference. And that's all they are. They're not that important. Points of reference are just areas to look at now, but every important point of reference if you were in the bullish camp has already been violated so that means constructive nature is off same thing why big picture put ibd in correction last wednesday that was an inflection point that was uh you know uh switch gears start being net short versus long that's 
you know, get rid of loose longs. That's even getting cash even as a macro investor. If you watch close enough to get back in at the right time, like we've seen inflection, you know, inflection points three or four times this year where you could have saved yourself some pain and actually wrote a rally that that made sense. So with all that said, you know, and all the headlines out there, it's, it's a tough environment, an environment just to, you know, only look at compelling areas, not press the buttons, not push it, no need to be a hero. You know, you're not playing a football game right now. You're not, you know, in the battlefield in another country where you have to, you know, live to die. You know, you, you live to fight another day or, or you follow your rules to fight another day when it, it makes more sense. And that's what you have to do. And it happens a lot of times in your career as a trader or as a market participant. There are times that are dangerous. There are times that don't make sense. There are times when you need to pull back so you don't lose money that you don't need to. And that's what you're supposed to do here. You know, I know that the oscillator is probably now over 100. I think the high of the oscillator might have been 140. So there's still some room there. And the same way strong markets continue to get overbought, you know, weak markets could get oversold as long as they want to. And this is not even, you know, this is a, a scenario that's different than all the times because you're talking about systemic failures potentially. You're talking about a lot of different types of headlines from every place around the world that are all colliding together. So what does that mean? It means risk off. If you miss a trade, if they gap them up 15 handles on Friday, who cares? Because they can gap them down 40 and they can put you out of business if that's where you're at. So at this point, just let's take it day by day. There will be a time when we see a better setup when you get a day one and then you get the potential follow through or there'll be a time when you, know, you put that hammer on high volume. Maybe it happens on Friday or maybe it happens next week and then you, know, you could trade against it. But for now, there's really no clarity to the European solution. There's no real end to the U.S. debt problem here, and all these things are not going to go away you know, for a while. But at times, you can see a technical picture that makes sense. You know, even that October 4th low of, of 1070 to uh, 1292 made sense because it followed the rules. 25% retracement areas never got violated. You had breakout retests that held. You had leaders you know, making moves ahead of the market. You had things that made sense to us. So that's a time to push it. Now, in a, in a corrective phase, unless you're a bear that's committed to it, you take a step back. You know, there'll be actional, there'll be actional setups, like that resolve, the, you know, resolve to the downside. That was an actionable setup. You know, but for those of you that take the three-day trade, now you have to wait for another setup so you feel a bit more confident about it. So wash that all away. It's all gone. It's Wednesday. It's... Uh, 425, I gotta get rolling soon. You have Thanksgiving coming up. So what you wanna make sure you, is not to take it home. You know, take a shower, go take a sauna, steam room, go work out, go do something. If you had a frustrating day and put on your happy face and start defrosting your turkey and get it all ready and marinate it overnight and, and enjoy your family because tomorrow's one of those days where you have to appreciate what you have because I'm sure you have it a lot better than other people out there. And just, you know, the small things, don't sweat them and appreciate what you have because the grass isn't greener. And at least if you're watching this video, if you're a member of T3 Live, you're putting yourself in a position to, to get ahead and to participate in the market in a way that makes sense instead of getting abused by it. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the night. Enjoy tomorrow. I'll see you Friday morning.